Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, joining us for today's community conversation is El Paso Animal Services. Thank you so much for being here with Thank us in this me. studio. We have Public Affairs Coordinator Julie Newbold and, and we also have Animal Protection <laughs> Manager. We have Roxy here. She wants to be uh, introduced first, but this is Gina Ramirez and we are talking about Animal Cruelty Month. So yeah. we'll start off. How common are animal cruelty cases here in El Paso and is it is it a big problem in our area? So yes, animal cruelty is a very real cr um, crime that's happening nationwide throughout the world but it's also a very underreported crime um, we always encourage the community to speak up and say something um, oftentimes as a neighbor that you're reluctant because you, you live next door if they're seeing something happening but um, without us these pets don't have a voice yeah and the animals that you all are taking into your care at the shelter how often are we seeing animals come in that show signs of animal cruelty um we see them every day we investigate abandonments um every day roxy had previously been um, adopted from us in 2020 um, and she ended up in the streets um, and attempts to the owner were unsuccessful so She's back at the shelter and she's such a beautiful dog, very calm, very docile. And now animal cruelty doesn't always imply like a physical harm to the dog, right? Because it's the way a dog is being kept. So explain like if people are watching for signs of animal cruelty or what constitutes animal cruelty, what can people look for? Correct, so animal cruelty takes very uh, various forms, not only physical abuse, but um, it's gonna be lack of food, lack of water, um, not maintaining your pet in the best health, um, Lack of medical attention, oftentimes pets can get injured playing or jumping the wall and um, owners fail to realize that pets also need medical attention and the delay of that can cause infection, um, sepsis and sometimes even death. And you guys, I'm sure, work in collaboration quite often with the police department to provide justice to these animals that are being put through these terrible situations. Can you talk about that collaboration between you guys and police? Yes, absolutely. So our, our partners, the El Paso Police Department Animal Cruelty Unit, we have a very close-knit relationship. Um, it's very cohesive. We work every day with each other. Um, if our animal protection officers are deployed out to a call on a what we would call a standards of care, maybe lack of food or water. And upon arrival, we quickly see this pet is emaciated. Now it's revolved into a cruelty. Um, it, they're, they're a phone call away. We call them and then they get deployed on scene as, as well. And then at that time, we start collecting evidence and statements and, and we start the fact finding and investigation process. And charges will vary, right? Like what are some of the penalties that people can face for animal cruelty? Absolutely, so anything with the animal protection team, um, my team is gonna be a class C misdemeanor. But once it evolves to the, um, the cruelty unit, they can face from class A, um, class Bs, dog fighting, um, intentionally fighting your, your pets are gonna be um, state felony. And how significant would you say that the issue is in our area? How often are you guys seeing animals come in that have been through animal cruelty? Um, as mentioned, we investigate cases every day. Um, behind the scenes, it's not always uh, broadcast, but we, um, do, do we do draft up seizures where we have to go before a judge and request a warrant to remove these animals, um, but we investigate um, cruelty and standards of care um, every day throughout the week. And it's, sometimes when we investigate, it's not necessarily what's been called in, maybe a misunderstanding, um, if it's called in with no water and we see, okay, the water was tipped over, there wasn't an intentional act there. But it's also um, being mindful of our pets, the heat's coming up. The, oh. the heat's already here, what am I talking right. about? <laughs> um, and our pets, um, we, try, we always recommend to bring them inside. 110 degree weather yes. is not uh, con conducive for our pets outside. And unfortunately, we do investigate a lot of deaths like that in the summer where yeah, they pass away in, in the yards outside. Yeah. And so, tell us about Roxy, right? That's what we want to know yeah, about. Julie giving Roxy all the love right here. She has been yeah. such a great sport for us today. Yeah, she's definitely a lover, as you can see. Um, she likes to be with her people. Um, we think she might be potty trained too. And there's a lot of dogs in the shelter that, you know, already know tricks, already are potty trained. We can tell that, you know, huh. they, were, they come from a loving, they came from a home at, at some point in time. So it's just um, you know, reaching out to the community and making sure that whenever they're wanting to add a pet to the family, they're adopting and also taking care of the pets that they currently have. That really makes a difference in the lives of the pets in the shelter and of course in the lives of their own pets. Absolutely. 
Well, Roxy is up for adoption, yes. and we want to help find Roxy a great home to go to. She is <laughs> such a lover girl, you guys. What an incredible <laughs> animal that you guys brought here today. And there's, I'm sure, dozens and dozens of yeah. others that also need homes. So before you shop, make sure to try and adopt just because that's really important. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you both for being here with us. Thank you. No, thank you. And I just want to remind the community to please go orange for the month of April. Um, wear your orange <laughs> bandana, yes. little bracelets. We have goodie bags for you too. Awesome. Um, I'll bring them in. Thank you. And um, an orange ribbon, but let's make El Paso the leading animal welfare in, in Texas. <laughs> yeah, and really quick before we go, just if you could quickly mention, Julie, some of the events that are happening this weekend that people can show up to. Yeah, yeah definitely. We actually have one going on tonight from 4 to 7 at the Wayne Thornton Community Center. We have one going on tomorrow at Pets Barn, and then another one also on Saturday at Pat O'Rourke. Um, we'll be having also microchips, low-cost vaccines by partner veterinary clinics, adoptions, and you can find all the details on our upcoming events on our website at lopasoanimalservices.org. She's saying goodbye. She's giving, <laughs> She's giving paw. paw. Well, we'll put all of that information on our website for a replay of this uh, community conversation and past community conversations. Again, you can go to kfoxtv.com. Yeah, we'll be right back after this short break.